Well, first and foremost, man, how you doing today, man? Good. How you doing, bro? I'm good. I can't complain. I can't complain, man. Um, when I got the email about interviewing, I was, I was excited, bro, because this is my first time uh, really, really diving deep with somebody who, um, who's who been going viral off of TikTok. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, a little, I'm a little older, so, you know, I've been I've been on Instagram uh, trying to get on the TikTok train. Yeah, but, no, I'm the same. I'm 27, so okay. I, I, I've always known of TikTok, but never really cared like to get on it and stuff like that. Like I'm, I'm Twitter and Instagram is really like my go-to's. So yeah. I saw the kids doing the whole TikTok thing, and I was like, man, I'm gonna kind of leave that to the kids. But eventually, I just I had to hop on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, man. All right, well, first and foremost, man, tell us tell us your background. So like, uh, for people who don't know, you're you're based out of Dallas, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I was born in Dallas, uh, Oak Cliff. Lived in Grand Prairie my whole life, so I mean, I've always been in the DFW area. Okay. So, um, so how did so when did music come about for you? What were you doing before music, and how did you get into music? So basically, the whole thing started like ten years ago. I used to play sports, so Wayne was always my favorite rapper. I was kind of yeah. always looked up to Wayne, wanted to be my own little Young Money CEO of my of my friends and stuff. So I always liked his music, and I kind of kept that with me for basketball and stuff. And when I realized I wasn't going to grow any taller and I wasn't going to go to the league, I was like, man, I want to do something with music. Same. So I started doing the parodies and stuff. Like I had, I, I got my editing and recording and all that from my basketball background. Like I used to edit my own videos and chop them up. And then after graduation, I graduated in 2011. So after that, that's when I was like, I want to do something with video or music. So okay. I kind of did a little bit of both. I was recording my own parodies and like little Drake skits and stuff like that. And yeah. one of them, one of them took off and went by. Viral like eight nine million views. It was a uh, hit the one back in 2015. That one took off like okay. crazy. Yeah. And then from there, I was like, I always wanted to take music serious, but I just thought like being the funny dude, no one's gonna take me serious. Right. So I kind of shied away from it for a little bit and just kind of did the parodies and stuff. Okay. And then I, I got with my girl in 2016, and she was like in the makeup and stuff like that. So we kind of just bounced ideas back and forth from each other and stuff like that. And then eventually, like. Time passed, you know, we kind of built up our audience. Like she she got her thing going with the makeup. I kind of got my thing going with the parodies. And okay. we ended up signing the Univision for a little bit in LA for our YouTube channels. So okay. that was kind of a big thing for us. We'd go to VidCon, network with these big uh, YouTubers and stuff like that. So right. we started growing. Kylie Jenner started retweeting some of my funny videos. And then that's whenever stuff really started to kind of pop off. And then eventually, fast forward to now with the whole quarantine thing, I was like, I got time to actually make music and do what I really been wanting to do all these years. So the first one I actually dropped was like boom, crazy. So, so right after that, the first the first song you dropped just took off like yeah, that. Yeah, the very first technically I call it my first real single because everything else I it was just me playing around and nothing serious. So the first one I actually dropped was the one that just took off. Luckily, so okay. So uh, do you remember when you recorded it? Yeah, um, it was it was in the end of March. So this is like I think the first or second week when they're saying everything shut down. Like gotcha. you can't be going outside. Like coronavirus is crazy. Don't even go like all this stuff. So me and my girl, we had bottles and we we're like, man, we're gonna go on live and we're just gonna take shots with people on Instagram live. So we're over here chopping it up with our supporters. Like we've always done that. We always got on live and just chop it up with our, our people who follow us and stuff like that. Right. And then um she had mentioned like cause she was on TikTok. My girl was on TikTok like crazy and I used to kind of make fun of her for it. And um, she was like, man, we need to make our own challenge. And I was like, I've been thinking the same thing. We're already on the same page. We just didn't know what to do. And then that night when we were drinking, taking shots, she just straight up said it. Just It just came out naturally. She said, take a shot and make a TikTok, bitch. And then that's when it rang. I was like, hold up. That's a song right there. And she looked at me and she's like, make that shit a song. But literally, like, the next day I got on the track. I got on my little – I don't even have a studio. I have a mic. And I just recorded it straight there in the room. And the, like, I, I think I did a 10-second or 15-second clip at first. And it was never even meant to be a real song. It was just some fun stuff to put out while we were in quarantine. Right. And then, um, I think a week or two later, I checked on the stats on, on TikTok. And it was like, yeah, 2,000 or 3,000 people doing your video or doing the, the trend of the, the challenge. So I was like, dang, that's that's kind of a lot for, you know, for us yeah. just to be playing around. And then as the weeks, like, grew, I think a month or two passed, it was at 10,000, 20,000. That's when I was like, man, I got to drop the full song. So yeah. got back in there, wrote the full song, and then the rest was just boom, like, just took off. Dang, that's crazy, bro. So, yeah. so I see you got a you got a manager now. So, Paco has Paco always been your manager, or Paco recently came on? He he recently came on. Uh, I've known Paco for about ten years. Like I've known Dustin Cavazos and all the people he works with. Those are my close like friends and stuff. So I've always kind of known Paco. And then he hit me up. I think it was like mid May or something like that, right before Jason Derulo, because Jason Derulo ended up doing the song, did the challenge. But it was like a week before that happened. Paco hits me up. I was like, bro, like you're onto some like some genius shit right now. Like nobody really has a TikTok record. There's songs going crazy on TikTok, but they're not an actual TikTok record. 
right. and he's like, what you did is crazy. Like, what's up? So me and him linked up. And then uh, ever since we linked up, just nothing but good just, just right. happening. Jason Derulo, Ariana Grande's cameraman, and some a few people who are in movies. I've seen people on MTV shows. Like, all of these people I don't really know, but I'm looking at their following, and I'm like, there's somebody. I mean, they're yeah. doing it, and they're sharing it, and it's going crazy. And yeah. all these big YouTubers are doing it, and it's going crazy. So I linked up with Paco, and then everything else is just history. He makes his moves, and then, bam, we got Lil Jon and Flo right on the track. Yeah, man. So, so that's crazy. So, so our platform is called Cosign. It's also always about like a stamp of approval, supporting yeah. you know other artists, fresh entrepreneurs, and creators, right? Yeah. So, man, for this to be your first you know real single and to get co-signs yeah, right. from Jason Derulo, Lil John, a flow rider. How does yeah. that feel, man? It's crazy, man. Cause it's like it's I've always been viral. Like me and my son went viral last summer, and he got he had uh Adam Twenty Two, No Jumper, and Trippy Red, oh, and a lot of big people. Cause my son was four at the time. He did a little song and. We've always went viral, but it never went to the next level. So to see people co-signing and really backing it up, and now that I see the actual city of Dallas showing love, like it's yeah. it's crazy and it's it's like it's overwhelming because I've been doing this stuff for so long. So to actually yeah. see it fall into place, it's just like bittersweet, really. Man, bro, that's 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 amazing, bro. So I know there's no right answer or no formula for this, bro, but. What do you equate going viral to? You know what I'm saying? From your experience, right? Like if somebody just yeah. fresh off, like what advice would you give them if they're trying to go viral? Like how does that even work? So, I mean, I feel like, and this is just from my experience, when you really, really try hard, it just never, it flops every time. Most of the viral things that I've done were just some stuff I put out, like just not even thinking it's going to go viral. I'm like, okay, this will probably get a few hundred likes or retweets on Twitter. And those are the ones that really go crazy. And uh, with me and my girl, the thing is, when we got together, we were never supposed to be this relationship goal type couple. We were just together. She was doing her thing. I was doing my thing. And anytime we posted each other, people just loved it. So anytime we kind of did some stuff together, boom, we go viral. No. I'd be on these relationship pages and stuff like that. But as far as like the music, I think all of my parodies and stuff just kind of went viral on its own by just throwing it out there. I mean, it's hit or miss. I threw out so many videos over the past few years and one of them had to hit so i yeah. think really just staying consistent and not really not trying to make a video specifically just to go viral just put out what you love to do and eventually one of them will take off not definitely bro so how has life changed for you since you know uh the record came out and kind of blown up man it's changed a lot like i'm starting to see all these cousins and stuff that i got <laughs> from down south because my, my family's from mccallan down south texas yeah. So a lot of them that I've, I've never even heard of, we just got the same last name. What's up, cuz? I see you over here on the radio and blah, 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 and yeah. this and that. So, I mean, it's cool. A um, lot of, lot of. I mean, I was always kind of already taking pictures and stuff when I got in public. People kind of already knew me and my girl, but it's starting to be a lot more of me because at first it was her. She's the one with the big following. So oh. it's, oh, it's Britney. It's Britney now. So, oh, shit, they got the song with Lil John and Flo Rider. So yeah. what's up? Like, how you doing? How are things? So things really been popping off and going a little bit more crazier even though this whole quarantine's got us stuck in the house so yeah, man. i mean it's i can definitely see how it's gonna be once all this stuff kind of dies down it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy not for sure bro i was looking at some of your posts bro and i was seeing that you uh you were really pushing to get um tiger yeah at first it was originally because the thing was whenever i found the beat it was a tiger type beat on youtube gotcha. so i mean i kind of already felt his vibe like the way and the way he's been putting out music lately he's got the girls everywhere everybody's yeah. partying like beach kind of or not even beach like pool pool scenes and stuff like that so that was the approach i went with this song and then once i knew the funny thing is i knew someone big was going to get on the song like i just right. knew it once i started writing the song so i left the open verse like i didn't even finish the song i left the open verse because i had got my friend uh, my followers to to tag kylie jenner and then she ended up reading retweeting one of my videos back in like 2016 2017 so i was like if i could reach kylie i could reach tiger so i had everybody tag tiger tag tiger and eventually, yeah. I mean, Paco came and did his work and stuff like that. And we got a little John and Flo Rider. But yeah, originally I did want to get Tiger just because I felt like the beat was definitely his type of beat. Right, right, right. Not for sure. Um, so what, like, what do you think, like, if he did finally approach you, would you do like another, like a remix to it or or or, or it's kind of... Nah, I think, I don't know. I was talking to Paco about it. And I really think like how the Old Town Road, that Lil Nas did what, seven, eight, nine remixes to his song. I was like... I'll ride this wave, like, <laughs> like I will with throw Tiger on there, we'll throw anybody on there, as long as it's, it's, it's yeah. as long as it's a, a catchy, trendy song, and if they kill their verse, they kill their verse, because yeah. Flo Rida, I ain't gonna lie, Flo Rida ate his verse, I didn't think he was like, like that. <laughs> but I mean, I would do that, another thing we've been talking about was kind of doing like a, like a Latin style, like I, I wouldn't mind having like some J Balvin and Bad Bunny kind of vibe, because that's still popping right now, so yeah. no, I definitely want to, I definitely want to try to do a few more remixes if possible. No, that'd be a vibe, man. So um speaking about your relationship real quick, man. So like 
what advice would you give to people like in relationships that's trying to do creative stuff, bro? Because I know it gets hard, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he has a lot of attention, you get a lot of attention, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes like people in the middle might try to tear y'all apart without even really knowing, bro. So like yeah, I really do. A lot of people do that shit on purpose. Like I think you just both both people gotta be strong mentally and like there's gonna be a lot of negative comments, a lot of positive comments. You kinda gotta just lock that out. Me and her, I mean, we're I always tell people we're not perfect. Like we're just like everybody else. We get into arguments. People seen us get into arguments on social media in the past and stuff like that. So it can get really bad, but then we had to really just backtrack and kind of just focus on our goal. We have a daughter. So we're like, you know, we got to really, really focus on us and as a family. So at the end of the day, you kind of got to realize social media between real life. Cause a lot of people, I have friends in LA that are like YouTubers and right. they'll tell me, bro, I'm only with this girl. Cause we got clout. Like it ain't even, we ain't even together like that. It's just, we got the clout. So I'm like, that ain't us. We're a real family. Like we're, we're genuine. If, if I got to get offline to, make my family work, then I'm gonna get offline because that's the most important thing to me. So I think really it's just, you gotta have that right mindset. You gotta block out the negativity and y'all gotta be on the same page. Like if you're not on the same page, I've seen a lot of people's relationships just go to the dirt. So a lot of communication. That's amazing, bro. And uh, I've been seeing like the family post, bro, which is amazing, bro. I'm glad we're in an era and a time right now it's where people appreciate relationships and family, yeah. bro. Cause you know, a couple of years back ago it was always about being single, turning exactly. up, partying. So like yeah. I like to see that people are really pushing family yeah, you know, yeah. relationships, bro. So yeah, yeah. Now, I was just about to say I know a lot of about ten years ago everybody was single this, single that. There really wasn't a whole lot of family oriented people, uh, and now I'm starting to see that a lot. And I'm just staying true to myself. I mean, my, my my dad was a good father figure. I was lucky to have him in my life and kind of show me, you know, like this is the way that it should be. And I I wanted to do that when I had my son. So yeah. once I, I had my son, 2015, me and his mom aren't together anymore, but. He sees my my fiance like his like a, a second mom. So we all we're all on the same page and everything's good. And I just want to show them the right way and kind of you know respect everybody and show love and all that negative stuff. I mean there ain't no need for that no more. It's like everybody can win. So why be negative towards somebody? Yeah, no, no, that's real, bro. Um, kind of taking it back to the whole cosign thing, bro. So who was it? Could be with the parodies or or anything, but like who was like the first person that kind of cosigned you and was like, bro, you got something. Like you should keep doing this. Who like that first person? Um, I think, well, it's crazy because I don't know if you know Chingo Bling, but Chingo Bling. <laughs> yeah, I did. I kind of looked up to him for a minute because I'm half, I'm half Mexican, I'm half white. So I was doing the whole Cholo parodies. And yeah. really, he was like somebody that I looked up to. And I would try to get his attention back in the day. And I would always tag him and have people, have people tag him and stuff like that. And it kind of upset me. Not really upset me, but I finally got one that popped off. And he did the same exact song the next day. But mine got more, more uh, views and stuff. And I ran into him at Bucky's, and I know he saw my post because he had said he had, someone was like, "Bro, did you see this one?" And he kind of threw some shade towards me. And I ran into him at Bucky's, and I was driving to Houston like two weeks later, and we chopped it up. And he's like, "Nah, bro, like I really fuck with it. It's just I'm trying to get back on my shit too." And he's like, "I see you. Not as competition. It's like some friendly competition." Yeah, so yeah. really, Chingo Bling was the first person, like I guess you could say that was on a bigger level that right. I kind of talked to who told me. But as far as like really getting out there, my hit the one video that blew up, Mike Epps actually shared it a long time ago on Facebook. And was like, bro, this shit is funny, bro. He over here talking about mowing the grass and blah, blah, blah. So really, that was, I would say Mike Epps was kind of like the most, I mean, at the time, I was like, man, that's huge. Because Mike Epps is like, he's funny as hell. And to me, he's, he's, sure. he's a veteran. So that, them two definitely, definitely inspired me a lot. That's dope, bro. So, man, so if you could, if you could take a, take a shot and make a TikTok with anybody, bro, who would it be? Man, it would be Wayne and Drake. <laughs> Wayne and Drake. Those, those two right there, man, like. That's everything I do is because of them. Like I just feel like I'm I'm trying to be on my young money OVO, yeah. like that that level of, of what they're at today. I mean Wayne is a classic to me. He's the goat, and then he he found Drake, so gotta yeah. respect him for that. And Drake's my favorite artist, so definitely them too. Yeah. Like, what's your thoughts on the, uh, Drake's late, latest record with Lil Durk, the Laugh Now Carl? I like it. I think I think he's really killing it because I mean I've never seen nobody at the whole Nike headquarters do a whole video like that. Like. And when it comes to endorsements and sponsorships, like, Drake kills the game because of his image. Like, I was telling some of my friends, they're like, bro, you a rapper, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't really claim to be a rapper. I'm trying to be a, I'm trying to be on some pop star shit. So I'm trying to be like, I'm trying to make my image clean. I'm trying to, because I want to be like Drake. I want to have those sponsorships, those endorsements. And like you were saying earlier, I'm like a family man. I try to keep everything clean as possible. I try to make, make sure my image looks as clean as possible. I mean, I'm not perfect. I right. cuss. I say shit just like everybody else. But at the end of the day, if I can keep that clean image, I mean, sky's the limit. I think Drake's killing it when it comes to his image. You don't really hear 
bad stuff about him and when you do he kind of he kind of bodies the, the situation yeah. and it dies out like nobody really messes with drake like they used to so i feel like he's just he's on a whole different level so i, I really like the latest video though i was i was watching like three or four times and i was like anything he does just goes crazy yeah man that's bananas bro um have you have you have you thought about any companies you might want to work with as far as that single because i mean that's that's, I see liquor endorsements left and right for that one. Yeah, so originally I was I was talking about Hennessy, but then Paco, I think, I don't know, don't quote me, but I think he spoke with Hennessy, and they said they're more of a luxury brand. They're not really a party brand. So yeah. that was cool. I was like, no, nah, that's, that's understandable. But um, there's definitely, I love Crown, Crown Rose, my shit. Yeah. Uh, Malibu, my girl loves Malibu. So pretty much, I mean, whoever is down to work, we're down to work. Because, I mean, yeah. we like to drink. We like to have fun and party. So whatever we can do with that, that'd be cool. No, that's what's up, bro. So what? So that night that you and your girl was was chilling on Instagram Live and y'all did what? What shots were y'all taking that night? Uh, Vegas bombs. Lately, <laughs> I've been taking a lot of Vegas bombs. I don't know if you know what those are, but I yeah, got like, a bomb Red Bull and what else it's, is in there? It's the uh, Crown, Peach okay. Schnapps, uh, Malibu, and Red Bull. Okay. Now I like those because for some reason I I never really liked them at first, but then my homeboy was like, "Man, you come on, bro. That's all he takes." Like we're at bomb shows one night, so I'm taking them with him. And I never get a hangover. Like, I, I can drink 20 of those things and never get a hangover. So I was like, I think I'm going to stick to Vegas bombs. Those are my go-to for now. So that night, we were out there making them. I didn't even have my mixer. I had, like, a protein shake thing, and I was shaking them up. And shaking them up, yeah. Yeah, so that was that was what we were off of right now. I still be taking them Vegas bombs like crazy. No, that's crazy, man, bro. And, uh, and one of my last questions for you, bro, man, I really enjoy this, bro, is, like, coming from Dallas, bro, um, what advice would you get to other artists, man, who's trying to get their name out there? Because there's so much talent. And Dallas, yeah. we're starting to get a lot of recognition, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. What advice would you give them to kind of push past, you know, just that local artist or, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing in my, what I struggled with the past 10 years was consistency. Yeah. So, like, I would be consistent for a few months at a time, and I would see my numbers go up. I'll see results. And then I, I got comfortable and kind of, I mean, at the same time, I had two kids. I'm trying to be a family man. I got work. At those times, I had to work two jobs and try to make things work. So, at the end of the day, I feel like it's possible for anybody. It's just consistency is really my my key factor. I think that would play a big part in trying to get your name out there and then networking. Like be out there. I used to go to all these shows like before Post Malone blew up. Uh, I don't know if you know Ashlyn, but I was I was always at Ashlyn's yeah. little show. She would throw like I know Ashlyn. Oh, uh, those parties uh, she would throw. I used to be there too, man. Yeah, I used to be at the We Are Dallas's. Like all the yeah. events. Like I was there just networking, meeting people, and trying not to have bad blood. I know the city can be. Sometimes it can be a little negative here and there when someone starts to come up. Like, I'm starting to see it right now. Like, some post, some blog had posted me, like, new Dallas artists, this and that. And I'll get a lot of, oh, he ain't from Dallas. Where's he at? I ain't never seen him before. As long as you just kind of learn how to get the negative out there and not pay attention to it and, and feed into the positive, I think you'll break through that local stage and eventually get to where you want to be. Because that's, that's the way I went. I mean, I just kept staying on it, ignore the negative, and just stay doing me. And at the end of the day, be true to yourself. A lot of these people want to rap about guns and blah 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 and I'm like bro we went to school together I live next to you I know you ain't out here trapping and yeah. <laughs> so I mean I think just staying true and staying consistent is definitely gonna gonna get them to where they want to be not for sure man we saw a behind the scenes video man what can we uh when can we expect the full video to come out man we need to call Paco and tell him drop it right now because I'm ready I already seen the video like I had to add on a few parts to the video but it's it's done I know for a fact it's done I yeah. thought we were gonna drop it today actually but they ended up saying, let's wait on it because the song just dropped Friday. So I think they want to build it up, let it get a few, I'm thinking a few hundred thousand streams and then drop the video. Because I know there's still, TikTok knows of it, but there's still a lot of people that don't know the song. Like they don't think it's an actual song. So I think what they want to do is catch that wave of people knowing that it's an actual song. And then they'll be like, oh, I want to see the video and kind of build up that hype. So gotcha, hopefully bro. any day now, I think within the next two weeks, they should be dropping it though. Man, that's what's up, bro. And I just realized, I didn't really realize, oh, I just realized that a lot of songs on TikTok are just for TikTok. I didn't know like they're not actual full songs. Yeah, exactly. That's that's why I didn't even do the full song at first. I just did a 10, 15 second clip. Right. But then people were like, oh, you got to make this a full song. Because I didn't make it a full song until two or three months later. Like yeah. I let it ride out for that 10, 15 seconds and then it started blowing up and I was like, yeah, this is something I need to make a, a full song. And luckily yeah. I did. I'm glad I did. Not for sure. Um, and like a lot of our followers are like our business and creator wise, right? So is there ways, um, is there ways to monetize TikTok yet? I think that's what, like, my management, Paco and some people he's talking to, I think, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think he spoke with TikTok because I know they've already made some changes okay. on the original sound because the, the way we did it, it was weird. I had the song already made, but I didn't upload the song to TikTok to actually use. I used the song over my girl's video. So it just, it said the original sound was just her original sound. 
So yeah. they, I know Paco made some calls and they finally got that taken care of. So now when you go on there, it says, Nate God, take a shot and make a TikTok. So I think they're trying to monetize it because otherwise I don't know why they would have changed it. But I'm, I know they're working on there because I've, I've been seeing a lot of articles and a lot of things about how TikTok has all this budget to pay their creators and stuff like that. So yeah. I'm pretty sure there's a way. If not right now, there'll definitely be a way to monetize that. Gotcha, man. So you got to, so hopefully, man, they'll cut you a nice little check here in the future. Sure, that thing got at least 100 million views like by now. Uh, at least man that's crazy bro well man definitely uh i'll definitely be staying in the loop man and uh like we at right. co-sign we co-sign you bro and look forward to seeing your future and like i said everybody you know paco uh cali man we're real close bro so i look yeah. forward to any way we can support you you know what i'm saying on your way on your journey to the top bro we're here for you man appreciate it bro appreciate the love man i, I think uh i used to follow y'all back in the day i think you know frank you know frank lubiton yeah, yeah, it's the homie. Yeah, yeah, that's my boy too. He can he can co-sign for me back in 2012, 2013. I was yeah. at his very first uh Kicks 101. Yeah, Kicks 101. I, I sell shirts. So I've been out here for a minute, man, trying to do everything. Sell shirts, make videos, do everything. So yeah, it's man, dope to see everything finally come back around and everybody's starting to see the movement. Yeah, man, that's the homie, bro. I'm going to chop it over Paco, bro, because every year we do this thing called our co-sign awards, bro. Yeah, I saw that. I've, I've been seeing, I've been keeping up with y'all. Yeah, and this is the fourth year, man. So I'm going to talk to Paco, see how we can get you involved in that somehow. Yeah. And, and, sure, I'd love to be a part of that. Yeah, man, to make it work, bro. But, you know, uh, man, definitely continue keep doing what you're doing, bro. We'll definitely be in touch, man. I appreciate sure. you. Man. All right, bro. Good talking to you. Y'all take care. All right, man. You too, bro. You take it easy, man. All right. All right, peace.